Hey guys, it's Jasma, and today I'm gonna make a full Mother's Day brunch. A lot of this can be prepared the day before, which just makes it so much more convenient and stress-free the day of. It's also very delicious and quite healthy. Hopefully this can give you a little inspiration to do something fancy for the person who went through labor for you to exist. So let's get started. Since this is a full meal with four different components, I'm gonna order my tasks in the way that I would actually prepare it rather than make each thing separately and then just bring it together in the end. So first things first, I'm gonna make the dragon fruit chia seed pudding parfait because this is the one that requires the most downtime because chia seeds require some time to be activated after coming in contact with liquid and we want to give it plenty of time so that it can puff up and give it that pudding-like texture. So make sure you do this first and if you would like, you can even prepare the chia seed portion the night before and just leave it in the fridge. So I have my dragon fruit here and I'm gonna start by cutting that open. Before I puree the part that I need for the pudding, I'm gonna save a few dragon fruit balls and then I'm gonna scoop out using this little spoon to use as a topping for my parfait. If you don't have a scoop like this, you can also just use a rounded measuring spoon. That should work fine. Or you can just cut them up into cubes if you don't want to bother doing this step. Now that I've reserved the dragon fruit balls as the garnish, I'm going to scoop up some of the dragon fruit flesh, which I'm gonna blend into a puree to add to the chia seed pudding. I'm warming up my coconut milk in the microwave for around 10 seconds to help the chia seeds puff up a little faster. Then I'm adding the dragon fruit puree straight into that and stirring it until combined. It should give you a really nice and pretty hot pink color. To this, I'm adding my chia seeds along with just a pinch of salt. Mix this until all the chia seeds are coated with a liquid and then let this sit at room temperature for around 10 minutes. When you come back, you'll notice that the mixture is a lot thicker and that is because the chia seeds have been activated by the liquid. Give this another stir to smooth out any lumps and then transfer it into a cup of your choice. Then cover and keep it in the fridge until it is ready to be served. Next, I'm making the buckwheat crepe batter. This also requires a little bit of downtime, which is why I'm preparing it next. This is super simple to make. You basically just mix everything together and the batter is ready. If you would like, you can also combine the batter inside of a blender, but since I'm making such a tiny amount, I'm just gonna do it in a bowl. So crack in the egg, give it a light whisk, and then pour in the coconut milk. You can also use any milk of your choice, but I just like the flavor of coconut milk. Also add in the oil and mix that through. Now in goes the dry ingredients. So for these crepes, I'm using buckwheat flour and flaxseed meal. These are both very, very healthy foods and buckwheat is actually gluten-free. So if that's something your mom might be conscious about, this is a great ingredient to use. So add both into the wet ingredients along with a pinch of salt and mix it until there are no lumps. Now that everything is mixed together, let the batter sit at room temperature for at least 30 minutes if you plan on cooking it the day of. If you are preparing this ahead of time, which you can the night before, just mix everything, cover it, and then place it in the fridge until you are ready to make it the next day. We're letting the batter rest so the gluten has a chance to relax and this is what's going to form the most delicate crepes. Now on to preparing the filling of the crepes. So like I said before, this is a shrimp, mushroom, and asparagus crepe. So I have my cutting board here. I'm gonna first peel my shrimp. This is already deveined. I purchased this from Costco, so that just saves me an extra step. My shrimp is pretty large in size, so I'm just using eight in total. But if you have smaller shrimps, you can totally just adjust the amount based off of your preferences. Once ready, sprinkle some pepper and salt onto the shrimp and massage that in. Then I'll slice the mushrooms into fairly thick slices, as well as dice a shallot. And I'm also going to really carefully peel off a slice of the lemon zest. Make sure you don't get any white part on it. And then I'm going to slice it into thin strips. Also cut off about a quarter of the lemon. This is going to be used to cook with the shrimp later on. In terms of the asparagus, I'm going to blanch this in some boiling water just so that it is cooked and ready to go when we need to assemble the entire crepe. To your boiling water, add in some oil along with the asparagus and blanch this for no longer than 10 to 15 seconds. Immediately transfer into some ice water to keep it nice and crisp. 
The ingredients for the filling are all ready to go, but before we actually cook the filling, I'm gonna cook the crepes first. I try to get everything ready before making the filling since we can't let the filling itself sit for too long. Once it gets cold, the sauce, which has a roux base, is gonna form a really clumpy and weird texture, which is why I'm going to cook that the last. So I'm gonna set all of the ingredients aside and then take my crepe batter and thin it out with some water. After sitting for a while, you'll notice that the crepe batter is actually a lot thicker than before. And since the crepes need to be really thin and you need to easily be able to spread it on the pan, I'm gonna add some water and mix that in. And you can add more or less water depending on your preferences. I want this to be a fairly flexible crepe, which is why I'm thinning it out quite a bit. I'm ready to cook my crepes, so I have my pan. Make sure you're using a nice and flat, non-stick pan. Um, in terms of the batter, I'm gonna be using a third of a cup measuring cup to scoop out my batter. You can make them as thick or as thin as you would like. This just matches the size of my pan, so a third of a cup is how big I'm making mine. Use a spatula that is nice and flat like this. So I'm gonna first turn this onto high heat and wait for the pan to heat up nice and hot. Um, the first one usually doesn't come out perfect, so just treat it as kind of a test run. But you want it to become hot enough that the crepes are going to solidify once it touches it, but not hot enough that uh, it just immediately cooks once you put on the crepes because you want to be able to spread it out as well. In terms of grease in the pan, you can use some non-stick cooking spray to spray it. I like to just dip a piece of kitchen towel into some olive oil and then rub it throughout. I find that it's the most even way to distribute the oil without disrupting the final appearance of the crepes. Now that you're ready to cook the crepes, measure out your batter, turn the heat down to medium, and as soon as the batter hits the pan, you want to start swirling it around to spread it out into a thin circular crepe. Keep moving the pan until all the batter has solidified, then just let it cook on medium heat until a lot of bubbles form on top and the sides start to peel away from the pan. Get your spatula ready because we're about to flip. Make sure you loosen the sides of the crepe first before flipping it, and if you do this too early, you will break the crepe. Finally, let the other side cook for around 10 seconds until it becomes slightly golden brown. The crepes are ready, I'm just gonna leave them there since I'll be assembling it very soon. But if you make them way ahead of time, be sure to cover it so that it stays somewhere warm. So I'm gonna use the same pan, I've cleaned it out and I'm going to cook up the filling. Turn the heat to hot and add in a small knob of butter. You can also use olive oil if you would like, but butter adds a lot of flavor to the filling. So in it goes. Once it's pretty much melted, add the shrimp along with the lemon zest strips. Let the shrimp cook on one side until it turns pink and then flip it over. Be sure not to overcook your shrimp or else it's going to feel really tough in texture. Once the shrimp is cooked on both sides, take that piece of lemon we saved earlier and squeeze in the juice. This is gonna add a nice and citric taste to the dish. Once the juice is evaporated, transfer the shrimp out of the pan. I discarded the lemon zest strips because they are quite bitter, so they have given the shrimp the flavor that we needed, so we no longer need it inside of the dish. With the remaining bit of butter, I'm going to turn the heat back on, medium high, and I'm going to cook the mushroom along with the shallot. Keep stirring this around and eventually the mushrooms are going to release some of its liquid. And we want to cook this until it forms a caramel color. Then just like the shrimp, transfer it out of the pan. At this point, I'm going to press pause on making the filling and actually prepare my tea as well as the salad. They're both very flexible and self-explanatory, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Also finish assembling the parfait, which should now be set. So I'm going to layer on some Greek yogurt. You can add some honey to this if you want it to be sweetened. Then top this all off with a handful of granola, the dragon fruit balls, some fresh blueberries, and shredded coconut. I'm prepping all of this now so that we can serve the finished crepe as fresh as possible and not going to have to wait. So now we can go back and finish off the filling. On to making the sauce. Today I'm making an Aurora sauce, which is a French sauce that is kind of colored into a pink color using tomato paste. Now usually I wouldn't clean out the pan when it comes to doing this type of stuff because I want to keep the flavors of what I cooked before, but since the sauce has a really light color, the leftover things inside of the pan kind of ruins that, so that's why I cleaned it out. Um, I'm gonna start by turning on the pan. This sauce has a roux base, so I'm gonna start by adding in my butter. Let that melt for a bit. And I'm using a whisk that has kind of like a 
rubber coating. When it comes to stirring any sort of non-stick pan, I always like to use these so it doesn't scratch that coating. Once the butter is melted, I'm gonna add my buckwheat flour. Cook this until it starts to foam but not burn. And I'm gonna turn the heat down to medium and pour in my chicken stock. Make sure you stir this while you're doing it so it doesn't clump up. Thoroughly whisk that through and once there are no more clumps, turn the heat to high. And we're going to cook this down until it becomes a little thicker. While that's reducing, I'm mixing some tomato paste into coconut milk just to get it ready for the next step. It's gotten quite thick, so I'm going to season it with some salt and also a little bit of nutmeg. Now that this is seasoned, pour in the coconut tomato mixture. Turn the heat off and then stir this in until combined. Do not cook this any further or else it's going to turn into an orangey color rather than staying the pink color that it is as of now. Then immediately pour in the shredded cheese and there should be enough residual heat to melt this cheese without having to turn on the heat. So just let it sit for a bit and then go into stir until it forms a homogenous mix without any clumps. Reserve some of this sauce and to the remaining add the shrimp, mushroom and shallot from earlier. Be sure to exclude any excess liquid and finally just stir until everything is coated. And now we can assemble everything. So lay down your crepe with some asparagus slightly off center. Then generously spoon on the filling. You better not be cutting any corners with the lady who raised you, so pile up the mushrooms and the shrimp filling. Then just fold over the crepe. And on the side, I'm gonna put the salad that I made previously with a few lemon wedges for garnish, as well as some radish slices. And I'm gonna drizzle on top the crepe, a little bit of that extra sauce, and sprinkle on some chives. Serve the tea with a slice of lime, and that, my friends, is a full Mother's Day brunch. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do let me know in the comments if you want to see more full meal preparation videos like this one. Um, happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there, and thank you so much for watching.